gonna that's gonna open up a whole <laughs> enigma in and of itself. <laughs> How's it going? Hey, Rami. Hi, Rami. How are you? As an Egyptian who was raised in the U.S., I can relate to everything you're doing so much. And, you know, we really think it's incredible how bold and brave and forward you've been able to be with the show and so well received as well. I mean, if we're anything, we're forward, right? I mean, we're definitely <laughs> forward. <laughs> no. Where were you great. raised, Yasmin? Where, where in the U.S.? In D.C. Okay, cool. Nice. I wanted to start by asking you a bit about uh, your background, because I know a lot of people watching the show in Egypt and in our region don't know how much it is based on your life or inspired by stories, you know, of your friends or things you've heard happening mm -hmm. to other people. So we just wanted a little bit of background on that to start with. So much of, to me, what we try and do with the show is focus more on emotional truth so it's less of a biography and it's more, these are things that I care about and that I care to explore. And so I like to view the Rami in the show as what would my life look like if I didn't have a, a creative passion, if I didn't know what I wanted to do, if my family was less communicative, what could it feel like? And, and so I think it's almost like an alternate version of myself, like mistakes I could have seen myself making. Some of them I've made, but I think a lot of them I haven't, it's, it's almost like this character is a, a much more ego-driven version of myself. And he's almost in, in, in some ways kind of like tends to be, you know, there's always a version of yourself that you're afraid of becoming. And I think that's kind of where fiction becomes fun to explore those things. And, and I think we've put him in a situation where many people feel like they know a Rami. And I think it's about really leaning into that and putting him in the toughest spot. So it's not biographical in terms of events. Obviously in my life, I've been filmmaking and doing comedy since I was 15, 16. So much of this is really, yeah, kind of this alternate version of me. But were your parents like the brick kind of, or like old school version, like R Rami's parents, or were they more like, you know, modern Americanized kind of parents? I, I always felt like my parents were, have always been kind of a blend. I think they've, they can be open-minded, but you know, you, you really had to open that door with them. <laughs> you know, it, it, it took them a while. I think, I think we definitely had one of those childhoods where, you know, we live in New Jersey, but at home, you know, we're, this is Cairo. And I think we definitely had a lot of things that we, you know, learned about together. But I, I would say in the wide range of, I think, ways that, uh, we all know different Arab parents. I, I think my parents are very open-minded and, and they, they always appreciated the side of me that wanted to do filmmaking, that wanted to do comedy, but they always just said it was a hobby. You know, and they were like, cool hobby, but what are you really going to do? And and I, one of my first stand-up jokes was like my, with my mom when, you know, I was saying, you know, you become, there's only a couple of jobs you can have. You, know, you become a doctor if you're good at science, an engineer, if you're good at math, uh, you become a lawyer, if you're good at nothing. And my mom always wanted me to be a lawyer. And I remember even booking an acting job. And my mom was like, a big acting job on TV. Like I was moving to LA to be on the show. And my mom was like, amazing. Now you can be a lawyer for actors, you know, and you can do their contracts and you can negotiate for them. You know, she like <laughs> couldn't, couldn't process that, you know, I'm going to act. So it took them a while, but then they, you know, they got it. And so they've been very supportive. So that's amazing. So would you say like, so the inspiration behind the show was kind of to show the struggle of new generation of Egyptians, Arabs growing up in the States and the disconnect between the old, their, their parents' generation and the young generation? Yeah, I think so much of what every generation has to do is figure out what am I going to hold on to and what do I actually believe? And I think a lot of stories that I've seen have been somebody trying to leave their culture and leave their faith. And I really wanted to make a story about somebody who wants his culture, who wants his faith, but he's very torn by the times and he's torn by his nefs and he's really trying to battle it and he's trying to understand it. And I wanted to make a show that really showed that. I think what's very interesting for viewers in the Middle East is 
you know, this misperception of, you know, Egyptians or Arabs raised abroad are more open-minded, more, uh, less connected to their religion, less connected to their culture. I thought one of the most interesting episodes was when Rami goes back home and he sees, yes. you know, the high society parties with their, you know, extracurricular activities and things. And, and it's actually more than New York, you know? So I thought that was really interesting and accurate. My question is, how is that perceived in the U.S., you know? For me, something I was really trying to explore is the ways that we stereotype ourselves. You know, my character has this expectation, not only wants, but needs must to be and feel like for him. And he's not taking into account the humanity of the people there and the experiences of the people there. And I think everyone is dealing with their own version of confusion. And it's not fair to say that a group of people or that someone isn't allowed to have that experience or isn't allowed to have that feeling. And I think it, to me, it really highlights that we're all trying to figure out how to be, you know, and it takes different shapes, but that thought process, that action, I think is very universal. And so I think when people here saw the episodes in Egypt, there were so many reactions, one of them being that I think people felt really connected to what we depicted and kind of connected to what we depicted as the youth in Cairo. Um, and then also, I think a lot of kids in America who come from different countries, so many of them were like, oh my God, this is exactly what it's like when I go back to my country. And any country is like exactly what I go, this is exactly what it's like when I go back to Jamaica. This is exactly what it's like when I go back to Korea. Like, like the, the feeling is so universal. And I think it's made people really, um, so much of the feedback of when we, of the things that we did in Egypt, I think just kind of made people fall in love with Egypt too. You going to Egypt, the, the inspiration behind the storyline of you falling or like hooking up with your cousin. And how was that received by perhaps viewers in the US? Yeah, it's, it's funny because um, it, it kind of opens up this door, right? I mean, I think on many levels, the, the idea, I mean, look, if I'm being honest, obviously we all know in our many of our families, there's there's cousins who married each other. I mean, like, this isn't, it's not that. I mean, obviously, I think that there are things. I'm not pro it. I'm not against it. It's like anything in the show. It's not exactly a promotion of anything. It's more just a layer of complication. And I think it can be really funny. And I think that so much of uh, that relationship and showing that relationship for me is about saying, look, you think something is terrible. And we can challenge that and we can kind of make you realize, oh, wait, maybe it has more layers than I thought it did. Whether it's right or wrong, I think is based on the individual. That's for someone to kind of decide. But the idea that you can be so certain about something, that's what we're excited about challenging. And that's what we're excited about bringing life to. And so, so much of this show is not about convincing you of anything other than connecting at the places where we're probably equally confused and so the question to me is just very funny of like well what would you do if that was your cousin i mean that's just funny to me. it's just fun like you know it's like it can be so thought out it can be whatever but it's also just really funny because rosaline is such an amazing performer she's so like just the, the way she carries that performance obviously she's beautiful but it's way beyond that it's so this is the type of person that i think the audience can help but fall in love with. And certainly for Rami, it's like, neither can he, even though she's his cousin. And so I think there's something, you know, just about challenging uh, any sort of stereotype uh, that is really exciting for us. Yeah, and speaking of Rosaline, by the way, we have a question from her. Uh, yeah. She's asking you, uh, how does it feel uh, to be the only actor pretty much to kiss on Asr and Neil on camera because <laughs> Get asked this question all the time, and she feels like it's unfair, <laughs> and she wants you to get asked this question. Yeah, you know, I I was not aware yet of how that wasn't a thing. So you know, I guess we, we did a first. <laughs> I guess we did a first in that situation, but I was not aware that it was going to be a situation in, in that way. I think if I knew, uh, I don't know if we would have done it in the same way, but probably we would have. Probably still would have. But it was just interesting to find out later. <laughs> That's great. When you, as Rami, are pitching this show in the United States, like how easy or difficult is it as a 
Muslim, you know, Egyptian comedian to pitch and, and actually accomplish to sign with, a, you know, a huge streaming service like Hulu. It was, people were ready by the time that I went for it. And I think I've, you know, seen the industry change even in, you know, I've probably been involved in comedy in the industry for a bit over 10 years. And I've seen it change. Even when I started, I was younger. And I remember when I started, that was the time where if your name was Walid, you might change it to Wallace, you know, you know, you might try to make yourself sound different. And I think now we are in an era where diversity is being celebrated and being looked at where it's almost like the harder your name to pronounce uh, the cooler. And, and so it's, it's, I've seen that shift happen in even just the last 10 years. And I think around the time that I pitched my show, they were starting to be ready, you know, and it's unfortunate how long it took because I think it really took um, a lot of hatred and a lot of stereotyping and a lot of unfortunate behavior to finally get Hollywood to wake up and say, oh, maybe we need to be depicting these stories and these characters with a different nuance so that the introduction that people have to ought to be is not just terrorism. The introduction that yeah. people have to someone praying is not the idea of a bomb going off. You know, these sound like really simple things that we can undo. And we haven't, we haven't, I don't know if we've seen people praying without it turning into a complete disaster on American television and film ever. You know, uh, maybe, and, and, and if we did, I don't even think, you know, there's, there's certainly not multiple reference points that you could even think of. So is it fair to say, I mean, as far as I remember, that this is the first show with a like positive lead Muslim character? Arab Muslim, or I think someone who's really openly embracing and talking about the faith. I mean, I think Aziz Ansari and Master of None, you know, he has a Ramadan episode. I mean, he, he's Muslim, he doesn't talk about it. He has one episode he kind of gets into. So I always mention that because I, you know, I don't think it's fair to wipe away someone's experience, you know, yeah. but I think in terms of, you know, taking it on in the way that we do, talking about the faith, talking about the culture, and certainly from an Arab lens, there has been very, very poor and very little Arab representation. There's actually in America been a lot more South Asian, whether it be Indian and Pakistani representation than Arab. And so this, this certainly falls in under the first kind of Arab Muslim category for what we've been doing with the show. And so when you pitched it, you felt they were receptive. You didn't have to convince them. Uh, you didn't get any like uh, pushback on it no. at all. No, no, it's been, it was, people were ready. People were, were definitely ready. And yeah, really fortunate to be able to make the show. Yeah. Amazing. And the Hollywood reaction, the Emmy nominations. And uh, yeah. how is that I've... all feeling right now? Crazy. I mean, it's, it's, you know, there's like 500 shows on TV every year to be recognized as an actor and as a director and to have Mahershala also get a nomination, obviously, and, and he's obviously been known, but to have the character of a sheikh that is, again, not a crooked sheikh, not an evil sheikh, just a sheikh who is trying to be a good sheikh gets an Emmy nomination. That means a lot. That means a lot to me personally. It means, I think, something really incredible in terms of just being able to pierce through the volume and, and the amount of TV that there is to be recognized with, with three nominations is really, um, it means a lot for a, a show of our size. You know, we're not a big budget show. We're on a streamer that, that supports us, but we're not a big budget show. If you look at a lot of the things that are up and, and we're up against, you know, they have a lot of celebrity power, star power, all these things. All We have our story, you know, we have the size of the story. And I think uh, that's what was so amazing about the Golden Globe. I mean, we added rehearsal in the second season, but to get the Globe even before that, where again, the story is so small and it's so, you know, we're, we're going at it from a different angle. It, it means that people are, are really connecting with it. Yeah, and you're changing people's idea of everything we are, you know, which is really, really amazing. But how easy was it to, to get somebody like, you know, Oscar winner Mahershala to, yeah. to become yeah. a part of the show? Well, what was amazing with Mahershala was he reached out because he loved the show. So he just wanted to say congrats on the show and that he really appreciated the 
fact that the it wasn't just another show with Muslims being terrorists, you know, that it was and not only that, but that it was a show where you saw someone trying to practice the faith and that they weren't attacking it and they weren't attacking the culture, but it was self-examining. And so we really enjoyed kind of just connecting on that. And then it kind of turned into us getting dinner. And then I, I was kind of just like, you know, like Masri shit. I'm like, Hey man, you want to come do an episode? Like, you know what I, like, like I kind of had to do, you know, I had to use the Egyptian uh, negotiating skills. And I was like, come on, man, come do one episode. And he was like, yeah, I'll do one episode. And then of course, like any good Masri negotiator, one became six <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and, and, and it became, um, a really yeah really exciting part of of the show obviously i think he's part of the dna of, of the show in, in a real way yeah. amazing and i feel like some of the best episodes are the ones that focus on uh, uh your family members your sister your mom and your dad so i'm gonna see basically i want to ask you because you write and direct most of these episodes what is your inspiration or how do you basically channel their voices and have it be authentic? Well, I think it's like with every character, starting with Rami, I really try to imagine them in their lonely place, you know, in their place that they might not be talking about. And I think a lot of cultures, not just Arab culture, but if I'm going to talk about Arab culture, I think we have a lot of us keep things to ourselves and I think we have this struggle between what's personal and what's public and I think that we can be very private people in a way that I think can hurt us because we're not connecting on things that are really causing us pain and that could maybe cause us a lot less pain if we just talked about them with each other and of course in a way that could be constructive and so I think my the place that I try to go to is I really try and daydream about any of these characters and I really imagine you know what are they hiding what is it that this character wishes they could say mm -hmm. or wishes they could do because everyone has something like that and that's where we start and then we kind of have fun from there yeah okay nice and third season what can we look can you give us any tips on what's coming up next or who you're going to explore next third season is going to be really fun i mean i think we're going to dig even more into the family I think because of what happened at the end of the second season, this idea of the things that we hide or that there could be secrets, I think in this family that we're looking at, a lot of the secrets are going to kind of come to the surface. And I think in a way, it'll continue to be even more of a family show because there's going to be so many things that the family really has to discuss we'll be seeing a lot more from all our characters and kind of how they deal with, with what's happened and really with why it's happened and, and, and digging deeper into it. And I think it'll be really fun, you know, to, to be in that situation with them. Do you want to explore other genres like drama or something else? Or do you like being in your zone as a comedian? You know, what? I love uh, anything that feels exciting and honest to whatever the format is. And so I, also think in many ways, our show is kind of like a comedic drama, right? I mean, like we definitely get into heavier things, but I, I wouldn't mind going lighter. I, I wouldn't mind going sci-fi. I mean, like there are so many things that excite me. It's just about it being the right story and feeling like it has a good character at the heart of it. That's what's exciting to me. What would you say is the biggest pro and the biggest con of being a comedian? <laughs> um, the biggest pro is really the ability to be able to talk about anything and bring some sort of laughter or lightness to it, a levity to it, when it seems like there's no joke that could be told. That's really fun to, to kind of be in a position where you can figure out a way to make something really heavy a little bit lighter. I really enjoy that. The biggest con is probably everyone's always asking you to tell a joke and you don't want to sometimes. <laughs> Everyone always, you know, and there's never a good joke. When or they someone used says, to be funny, oh, right? Oh man, when someone says like on the spot, there's never a good joke. It's just, it never happens. And it's been really fun. And I got to say too, I would love to make a show in, uh, in Egypt. That's a, that's a dream of mine to make a show just top to bottom in Cairo. Uh, would be an amazing experience because I, I really loved 
you know, shooting the two episodes that we did shoot there. I'd love to shoot more of Rami there, but I would also just love to make something that is, again, kind of from like, from its core, Egyptian would be so fun. And speaking of that, like, who is an actor that you'd like to work with in Egypt, maybe, and also in Hollywood? Oh, that's a good, that's a good question. Man, there's so many people I'd love to work with in, in Egypt. I almost don't even want to pick one because then someone will be like, well, wait, why didn't you say me? <laughs> if, I, if I pick one person, everyone's going to be like, whoa, why didn't you? you? <laughs> why didn't you? You know, you know why Egypt you well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Egypt too well to answer that question. <laughs> There's just too much. <laughs> It's gonna, that's going to open up a whole enigma in and of itself. Um, I, I would just say that I'm, yeah. I'm excited. What I'm, and and I'll, I won't even, even on the Hollywood uh, level, I mean, It's less about going out and finding actors. It's more about finding the right stories. And I think that's what excites me about Egypt is I know there are some really cool untapped stories that the world would just be shocked and excited and fall in love even more with. And that's, that's what excites me. Lindsay Lohan. I heard that she was supposed to be in season two and that. Uh, yeah. In the episode, by the way, that you're nominated for, uh, right? Best director. Yes. So yeah. The, are we going to see her in season three, maybe? <laughs> you know, I hope. That would be amazing. I, I really think she's very special and very funny. And um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to reach out again, of course. I mean, I, I'm sure if I ask her, she'll say inshallah. And then I'll, and I'll be like, wait, inshallah, yeah or no? And she'll say inshallah. And I'll be like, I know, I know this move. I know she basically inshallah loved me. That's basically what happened. I was like, you want to come do it? She, I think I got inshallah loved. She was like, yeah, inshallah. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. are you coming? Are you not coming? You know, yeah. we've all been there. Because no, people were like, how could she not show up? I'm like, ah, look, man, I'm, uh, I'm sure? out of like, we, we're, we're used to, we're used to this, this kind yeah. of, <laughs> yeah, I'll be yeah. there. And And she's got it to other people, so it's not personal. Yeah, 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 it's not yeah. personal. It's never personal, yeah, yeah. Who's the celebrity that you were most surprised to learn that they love the show and they're big fans? Brad Pitt. Ooh. That was really cool. Wow. Yeah, Brad Pitt um, said he really loved the show and that was, that was exciting. That was really cool. What other projects are you working on other than Romy at the moment? Right now I'm developing a show at Apple with Steve from my show who uh, has muscular dystrophy and it's a show about the disabled community and his life in it. And I'm really excited about that because I think we don't see disabled characters a lot. And when we do see them, they're like the best friend or they just have a small role. And to get to do a show that really expands on him and his perspective. That's, that's what I'm really, really excited about. Yeah. Thank you so much, Rami. Uh, Yasmin, do you want to add anything? Yes, Rami, you have to promise us that when you next come to Egypt, you're going to let Enigma do a big party for you to celebrate you and everything Yalla. you've done. We're, we're so proud of you and you've really touched so many people here and I'm sure so many living in the States and abroad and, So we really want to get the chance to, to celebrate you and give you all the credit that you deserve. Oh, in your I see. thank you. Oh, thank you. I, I can't wait. I really, I, it'd be amazing. It would really be amazing. Okay. Well, we're going to hold you to that. We're waiting for Yalla. you here. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Thanks, Yasmin. Thanks, thanks Hamid. Thank you for your so time. So good to talk to you guys. Come on. Thank, thank you. you. All the best. Take care. Bye. Bye.